Isaiah 42 and 22. Isaiah 42 and 22. For this is the people who robbed this world. They are all of them snared in holes. They are hid in prison houses. And they are for a prey and none delivered. For a spoil and none said restore. That's right. So that's where we at. That's one of the prophecies that we would be in a prison house, stored in snared in holes and stored in prison houses. We would be a prey wherever we find ourselves at. Wherever the Father and led us, that's where we would be. We would be a prey. He said we would be a prey and none delivered. That's how I said in Deuteronomy uh, 28. We read that already. We said that no man shall save thee, or no man shall buy thee. By the eye of captivity, saying he just, so we just reiterate the same prophecies, because the same prophecies are all throughout the scriptures, from Genesis to Revelation. See, that's how we know how to identify who Israel is, because it ain't just one place where we see how to identify Israel, but it's all throughout the prophecies. And this is what we're talking about here: Israel, people robbed and poor, all of them snared in holes, and they are hid in prison houses. They are for a prey, none delivered, for a spoil, and none save restored. Verse 23. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? So Isaiah is letting you know he wasn't talking about what was going on in his day. He was prophesying. That's why he's called a prophet. He said, who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? The time to come means it's a future time frame that he was prophesying about. Okay, uh, verse 24. Who gave Jacob for a score in Israel's robbers? He, gave, he asked a question. Who was the one that gave Jacob, which is the same thing as Israel, who gave Jacob for a score in Israel to the robbers? That's what we ask today, you know. Who gave the black people for a score? Who was the one that bought the black people over here in this captivity, you know? Because when we're ignorant, we like to put this on, on a man. But see, man don't even it didn't even have the power to do what was done to us and bringing us over here the way that it was done in the so-called middle passage. See, we give our adversary too much credit, but we don't read the scriptures to find out who actually was the one that did that. Okay, who who did it? Did not Yahweh a key against whom we have sinned? For they will not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. Mm -hmm. Therefore he hath poured upon them the fury of his anger, and the strength of battle, and it hath set him fire round about. Yet he knew not, and it burned him, yet he laid it not to heart. That's what happened with us today. You know, we go on through all of these things, even unto this day, and we don't even consider, you know, what it is that causes the things to be like the way it is with us. We don't want nobody to tell us that we need to change our ways. We want to blame somebody else for our conditions, you know. We want other people to be sympathetic of our, you know, conditions. But the power is within our hands. All we got to do is repent, turn to the Most High, just like he told us in our First Kings 8 chapter. And we would uh, pray toward the house that he, that was built for his name's sake, and pray, you know, pray toward that land to him that he will hear, you know, and, and he will forgive. But we haven't been taught that that's what we need to do. Alright? Let's go into uh let's go into uh, Jeremiah the seventeenth chapter. Jeremiah the seventeenth chapter. Again, we we, we, we we can be here for another couple of hours going through all these scriptures to identify who Israel is. Matter of fact, this subject here is probably one of the first ones I did a whole three part, and the three parts wasn't even enough. Yeah. But it's enough to where you won't be able to gain say who Israel is, identify who Israel is. Jeremiah 17 chapter, and uh, and we're gonna read one verse, verse four, verse four, Jeremiah 17 and verse four. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thy inheritance that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For ye have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. So there it is another sign, another prophecy right there. 
he says, and you, you, you talking about Judah here. If you look at the first verse, he's, he's referring to Judah and talking about Israel, the nation of Israel. He say that even thy thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage. We are the only people on this earth that has been lost from our heritage. You know, like it was somebody on the message board say, well, man, you know, all these other nations have been through this. What about the what about the Irish here? And what about these people here? I say, well, all those people might have had some little, you know, affliction that happened with them. But collectively, the signs, you you, you can't have some of the signs that think it's supposed to fit. It's like my brother was talking earlier about the whole concept about Puerto Ricans and, and, and some people talk about the Puerto Ricans and this, that, and the other. Well, they still got access to their heritage. They still speak the t know the tongue that they, they spoke from the beginning. You know, but us, we would discontinue from our heritage. I mean, one time I had uh, the so-called Jewish guy try to bet and say, man, we've been keeping this thing for 2,000 years. He said, actually that, 2,000 years. I say 2,000 years? I say 2,000 years ago the true Israelites was kicked out of Judah. Right. So that's funny that you would say 2,000 years because that's about the time when we was replaced by another people. When a whole other people took over the land of Judah through the Roman Empire. So you spoke well about y'all been keeping it for 2,000 years. The fact that you've been keeping it for 2,000 years makes you None of the northern boy. Because it said that the true Israelites would have discontinued from the heritage that he gave us. We would be a lost people. Simple as that. So you keep holding on to that 2,000 years while the fathers right now we are waking the true Israelite according to the scriptures. Okay? He said, Thou shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies. Enemies is plural. It ain't singular. Okay, you can't come to me talking about some Germany. That just that that's one one nation right there. And most of y'all is well, related to them anyway. But that's a whole another lesson right there. Ashkenaz, Ashkenazim. That's a whole another lesson right there. He said enemies. The enemies are in the four corners of the earth. The four winds. That's where the enemies are. Enemies are wherever the Father done put us in the hand of those are our enemies. Simple as that. He said, you will serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. Israel didn't know nothing about America. They didn't know nothing about the whole entire Western Hemisphere. Matter of fact, nobody that we know that was living at this time knew anything about the Western Hemisphere as far as we know. Okay, but definitely Israel and Judah didn't know for sure. Okay. He said, for you have kindled a fire in my anger, which shall burn forever. Again, this goes back to Deuteronomy 28. See, the law is the foundation. The law is the basis. That's why when we read everything else that comes after the law, we know how to go back and, 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 and go to that foundation in order to establish the truth of it. All right? Let's now, let's go into um, Luke 21. Luke, Luke 21. It was Yahshua, the Messiah, he prophesied concerning when Israel would be lose their country, lose their land until the time appointed. Luke 21, and uh, let's go down and start, let's go down to, uh, uh, to 23, Luke 21 and 23, go ahead. Woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in those days, for there should be a great distress in the land and wrath upon this people. Now, if we go up, we ain't got time to go all the way up, but this was talking about, Yahshua was prophesying about 70 AD, the same time when the temple was going to be destroyed. All you got to do is go up a little bit and read that, but we're not going to read that now, but this was the time period that he prophesied about, that there would be great wrath on this people and distress in the land. Verse 24. And they shall fall by the edge of the sword, and shall be led away captive into all nations. Jerusalem shall be trodden down of the Gentiles until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. That's right, Jerusalem, that is our capital city in Judea. It's, he prophesied that it would be um, that it would be trodden down of Gentiles. That's what that's when you look over there, that's not the Jew, true Israelite over there. 
those are Gentiles that's trying to try and down the land, and they will continue to try and down the land until how long? Until the time of the Gentiles be fulfilled. The time of the Gentiles are not fulfilled. That's why I tell my Israelite brothers that when they be trying to trying to convert people and tell people that we need to go back over to our land, no, that's not what the scripture says. That is not what the scripture said. The scripture said that the Father will bring us back into our land and we won't have to sneak back into the land. We won't have to have no passport to get into the land. We gonna we ain't gonna be trying to look for no job when we get into our land. We ain't gonna go into our land with the with the little few savings we done worked hard in the, in the captivity for. I have not read that nowhere in scripture. Kings and you ain't read that nowhere in scripture either. Kings and priests. <laughs> you know, so he says, so if the time of the Gentiles have not been fulfilled, then that's two things that we can be sure that's happening. One thing is that it's being trying down of the Gentiles today, and some of you all over there crazy enough to be trying down over the land with them, but that's your own thing. I, I, I ain't got too much to say about that. And also, Israel is scattered in the captivity unto until all nations for this time appointed. Simple as that. And let's see, when will the time of the Gentiles be over? Go ahead. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon, and in the stars and upon the earth, the stress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud with power and great glory. Until the, until the Son of Man come with power and great glory, time of the Gentiles is still here. Right. Long as you got to pay them taxes, long as you got to pay for airfare, long as you got to pay all that you got to pay right now, long as you are subject to all the things you're subject to right now, whether you are over here or whether you are over there serving those Gentiles that are trying down your land, you still in the time of the Gentiles. See, you don't take a rocket science to understand what the word said, but just like we were saying earlier. See, we be trying to grasp over some deeper, higher level of understanding, but wait, the scripture is right here. If you can't get the basic foundation of what the word is saying, then you, can, then you ain't going to do nothing but get tripped up by all that other crap that you're trying to cling to. Okay? The Father's seeking those who are seeking out the, His Word, raw and uncut. Okay? I only got one more place to go. We're going to go right back to where we started this at the very beginning. Deuteronomy, the 30, 32nd chapter. Uh-huh. Uh, start at the number of, start at the ninth verse. Deuteronomy 32 and 9. For Yahweh's portion is in His people. Jacob is a lot of his inheritance. He found him in the desert desert land, and in the waste, howling wilderness. He led him about, he instructed him. He kept him as the apple of his eye. As the eagle stirred up her nest, fluttereth over her young, spreadeth abroad her wings, taketh him, taketh them, beareth them on her wings. So Yahweh alone did lead him, and there was no strange deity with him. He made him ride on the high places of the earth, that he might eat the increase of the fields. And he made him to suck honey out of the rock, and oil out of the flinty rock. Butter of kind and milk of sheep, with the fat of lambs and rams of the breed of Bashan, and goats with the fat of kidneys of wheat. And thou didst drink the pure blood of the grape. So Israel was doing pretty good right there. Israel was doing pretty good right there. We was in the Father's hands right there. Go ahead. For Jezron waxed fat and kicked. Thou art waxing, waxing fat. Thou art grown thick. Thou art covered with fatness. Then he forsook Elohim which made him and lightly esteemed the rock of his salvation. Yep, that's what happened. Every time we be in a good state of mind, we forget the, the Father. We forget all the stuff that we supposed to be doing. And then when we get blessed so much, we be thinking it be of our own power and might that cause us to be blessed by our own wisdom. Father don't want us to, to ever forget that he's the one that give it. 
He the one that take it away. That's what Job said. Job had a lot. He had a lot more than all of us put together, probably. You see, Satan, he was supposed to have been a true servant of the Father. That's the reason why the Father did that. He said, Satan, have you considered my servant Job over there? You know, pretty much. How come he's better than what you is? That's pretty much what he was telling him. And so, so Job was struck down. But then the father, uh, and then Job stood out of his mouth and said, Hey, Yah live, Yah give, and Yah take it away. Blessed be the name of Yah. That's what he said. Blessed be the name of Yah. Okay? So that's the mindset that we have to have. But it said that when we had all the stuff, we waxed fat and kicked. Okay? And we did not, we lightly esteem the rock of our salvation. Okay? Verse 16. They provoke him to jealousy with strange deities. With abominations provoke they him to anger. They sacrifice unto devils, not to Elohim. To deities whom they knew not, to new deities that newly, that came newly up, whom your father steered not. See, he already said that that was going to happen. Now, we did that while we was in the land, and now he done turned us over to serving them deities in the land of our captivity. According to what we read in Deuteronomy 28. Go ahead. Of the rock that begat thee, thou art unmindful, and hast forgotten Elohim that formed thee. Mm. And when Yahweh saw it, he abhorred, he abhorred them because of the provoking of his sons and of his daughters. And he said, I will hide my face from them. I will see what their end shall be. For they are a very froward generation children in whom is no faith. Mm. They have moved me to jealousy with that which is not Elohim. They have provoked me to anger with their vanities, and I will move them to jealousy with those which are not a people. <clears throat> I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. You see, that's funny. He said the Gentiles, they, he, he said they ain't even a people. Yeah. He just talked about collectively they wasn't a people. Oh, okay. Because they Civilized. Was, huh, well, you pretty much, yeah. Because yeah. until um, Philip Ma of Macedonia, that's um, Alexander the Great's father, you don't hear too much, much you about, know, about the Gentile history before him. Yeah. You know, you, you read about Neanderthals and yeah, Cro-Magnon exactly, and all what, that. Yeah, that's what I thought right, about the people. Right, yeah. right, right. You they say we, t you know, they've been taught from them caves. Yeah, and all, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> But when Alexander came on the scene, <laughs> you know, that, that was changed the game. And what did they do? They saw at the Egyptian, uh, uh, all that, you know, wisdom, right. all that. That's right. Yeah. That's right. You know, that, it is, yeah, it's it deep. That like we see, we see our brothers and sisters with the Greek fraternities and all that. But like, like, like they the beginning of wisdom or something. They need to seek out the, what them Greeks saw after. And even the wisdom before that. Oh, yeah. You know, but uh, again, you know, we, we subject of this captivity, so we don't really know no better. You know, no matter how much college education we have. But, uh, yeah, but that's what he's saying. He said, you, he, and he said it so clearly. That's how come you get the people talking about the white man wrote that Bible. Well, why the white man put this in here and then the white man wrote the Bible? I'm sure the white man wasn't telling on himself when he said this. He said, I would provoke you to jealousy with a people that are not a people. And then when you go into Romans 11 chapter, Paul talking to the Romans, he pretty much told them, y'all are the people that, that Moses was talking about here. Yeah. He quotes this to the Romans right there. He Be said, high-minded. Yeah, 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 he quotes this in Romans. As a matter of fact, I'm going to see if I can find that real quick. Um, but let's see, what did we um, read uh, in 21 to 21? He said, I will move them to jealousy which, with those which are not a people, and I will provoke them to anger with a foolish nation. We are provoked to anger right now. Provoked to anger by a foolish nation. Let me see if I can find that real quick in Romans. So Paul's talking directly to the Romans. But again, and it's funny because even in this day, they didn't know the Romans either in this day. See, the Romans wasn't even a people at the time when uh, when when, it, when the, uh, the father was prophesying this to Moses. Oh yeah. Okay, we're in Romans the tenth chapter. Let's pick it up at, 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 at Fred Price's favorite uh, verse. 
Y'all know who Fred Price is, right? The, bro the brother out there in California got his national syndicated TV show. We're going to pick it up from that. Romans 10 chapter and verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word <laughs> of Elohim. If y'all ever seen Fred Price before, this is his favorite verse right here. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing the word of Elohim. Verse 18. But I say, have they not heard? Yes, verily, their sound went into all the earth, and their words unto the end of the world. But I say, did not Israel know? First Moses says, I will provoke you to jealousy by them that are no people, and by a foolish nation I will anger you. Wow, see, he was talking directly to the Romans, saying, y'all want to know who Israel is? I'll let y'all know in the ninth, verse, ninth chapter, tenth chapter, who Israel is. Why the Father chose the chosen people and why he would not cast away his chosen people. But right now he done provoked them to anger by a foolish nation. So yes, Israel knew because Moses had already prophesied it. Okay, verse 20, go ahead. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel, he said, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. And we are disobedient and gainsaying even unto this day, you know. And when I say gainsaying, I mean, you know, you got brothers be out here on the street trying to call themselves representing the Father, representing the truth. But they cause people to gainsay because they be out here cursing calling people out their name and doing all that kind of crap. That's what that gang saying means. That's, that's what gang saying is. Gang saying is that they can't see that truth coming from you because they looking at foolishness come from you. But when we're out here, we're out here without gang saying. You know, we're out here when we're just dealing with the, the word raw and uncut. Not the way we want it to be, but how the Father has put it out there. That's without gang saying, you know. You might come out here and say, man, you know, I don't like the way them brothers wear their locks. Or I don't like, you know, the brother gym shoes he got on or whatever. But that, I can't do nothing about that. That's your own thing that's keeping you from hearing this truth. I don't like the way the brother reads. I don't like the way that brother teaches, the way his voice is, you know. That, 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 that's, hey, that, that's your own personal thing, you know. I ain't going to call you out your name, though. No. You know, I'm not going to uh, uh, do anything that's contrary to what the Father requires of us. And that is just to teach this truth raw and uncut, okay? Skip down to the 11th chapter of Romans. We're in Romans 11 chapter. Yeah, Romans 11 and verse 1. Go ahead. I say then, have Elohim cast away his people? Elohim forbid. For I am also an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of Benjamin. See, you got a lot of people right now saying, man, that Paul, man, he got some problems. He had issues. He's a false prophet, this, that, and the other. Y'all should be listening to some of the things that Paul was... First of all, y'all have no idea the kind of things that Paul had to deal with back in his day. Right. Paul is saying, if I am an Israelite of the tribe of the seed of Abraham or the tribe of Benjamin, okay? So he's saying that if, if the people have cast away, then you ain't got nobody to preach to you. Because that's what I am. I am an Israelite of the tribe of Benjamin, okay? So if you ask him, have he cast away his people? No, he has not cast away his people. Go ahead. Verse 2. Elohim have not cast away his people, which he foreknew. What ye not what the scripture says of Elias, how he maketh intercessions of Elohim against Israel, saying, Yahweh, they have killed thy prophets, and have digged down thine altars. And I am left alone, and they seek my life. But what saith the answer of Elohim unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. Even so, then at this present time also there is a remnant according to the election of grace. That's right. So he's letting us know that there has always been a remnant according to the election of grace. There's a remnant back in the 50s. There's a remnant back in the 40s. There's a remnant even when we were in slavery. Man, I got this book called Bullwhip Days, man, which is a book that is the quotes of actual slaves. And they had this one slave said that the preacher adjured to us that we were the children of Israel. Right there, this was a direct quote from a slave in the 17th century. You know, so there was always a remnant according to the election of grace. 
okay? We, we, we ain't the first. Whoever out here right now claim to be the first, they ain't the first either, okay? And if the Father don't bring the Mashiach to come down here to set his kingdom on the earth, we ain't going to be the last either, okay? There's always been a remnant according to the election of grace, okay? Right. Uh, uh, skip down, no, to verse 7. What then? Israel not, have not obtained that which he seeketh for, but the election have obtained it, and the rest were blind. We are the elect. The elect have obtained it. Yahshua said in the last days, he said that if it was possible, they would deceive even the very elect. But as long as you stay in the word, you can't be deceived. Okay? People out here being deceived by bells and whistles and by game saying and by all this other crap, you know? But you're supposed to keep your mind stayed on the most high. That way you won't be deceived. But go ahead. According as it is written, Elohim have given them the spirit of slumber. Eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. And that's why people cannot accept this truth right now. You know, they readily accept traditions and all this other stuff that supposedly sound good, but the Father them poured upon them a slumber of sleep. Eyes that they should not see, and ears that they should not hear unto this day. Go ahead. And David said, said let their table be made a snare and a trap, and a stumbling block, and a recompense unto them. Let their eyes be darkened that they may not see, and bow down their back always. Our backs are always bowed down. Simple as that. that that's talking about the one people, okay? That ain't talking about the people that own the banks, that own the media, that own all of the, the housing complexes and all that, in every land that the true Israelite is scattered. It ain't talking about them. Okay, it's talking about the people that are, are a prey to those people. Okay, um, go ahead. Verse say, 11, I'm sorry. I say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? Good question. Have Israel stumbled that they should fall? Let's see. Elohim forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation has come unto the Gentiles, for to provoke them to jealousy. Paul didn't make this up because we done read this in the, in, the, in the law already. He didn't make this up. He said that we were going to be provoked to jealousy by a foolish nation. But go ahead. Now if the fall of them be the riches of no, the world. No, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, go, I'm sorry. That's right. Now if the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. Now look what it says here. I want y'all to keep this in mind here. Because every time I read this, I think about when I had this little interaction with some brother, we were dealing with the Bible, and the brother said, brother said, well, I'm a Gentile. I said, brother, if you a Gentile, then if you, you ain't got calling. it, you ain't going to get it. <laughs> you you missing your calling. You done miss your calling. <laughs> Absolutely. You done miss your calling. If you ain't got it now, you ain't going to get it. Because he said that the fall of Israel is the riches of the Gentiles. You must have been standing in the wrong line or something. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> he said, Now the fall of them be the riches of the world and the diminish of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness. Because remember, one of the terms of the covenant, brothers and sisters, is that That's Israel right. will be a blessing unto all nations. Unto all nations, okay? That's why he said, How much more their fullness, okay? But go ahead. I speak to you Gentiles as, in as much as I am apostle of the Gentiles. I magnify my office. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are my flesh and might save some of them. Uh -huh. For if the casting away of them be the reconciling of the word, world, what shall be the receiving, what shall the receiving of them be but life from the dead? Mm -hmm. For if the first, first root be holy, the love is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. That's right. So the first fruit, we being the first fruit, we need to be holy. So that way those who would join themselves to us will also be holy. Well, if you got some Israelites out here that are wicked, they're going to be gra gra uh, gravitating. Other people are going to be wicked just like them. You know, but that's what he's saying here. But go ahead. And if some of the branches be broken off, and 
thou being a wild olive tree were grafted in among them. Thou, who was thou? You talking about you, the Romans, you the Gentiles. If some of the branches be broken off, and you or thou being a wild olive tree, that's what he called them Gentiles, a wild olive tree. Go ahead. Were grafted in among them, and with them partakers of the root and fatness of the olive tree. Boast not against the branches. But if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, mm. but the root thee. That's right. Mm. You can't boast, you know. Like I said, you got something right now talking about they the Israelites. We the true Israelites. We the true, you know, that uh that Ephraim and Manassas thing you got something on top about. Mm -hmm. No, we the true Israelites, uh uh. The wings of Eve. Huh? On the wings of All Eve. that yeah, <laughs> all that crap they got going on, you know. It's crazy. But that's what they out here doing. Hey, you better be fortunate enough that the Father have allowed you grace to enter in into this thing. Yeah, going out. Okay. Somewhat, yeah. All right. We're almost there. Okay. Go ahead. What did you leave off that? Uh, he was on 18. No. Read 18 no, he again. Was on 19. Boast, 18. boast not against the, the branches, but if thou boast, thou bearest not the root, but the root thee. That's right. Don't boast against the Israel, even though you see us in the state that we're in. The Father got us. Go ahead. Thou would say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, because of unbelief they were broken off, and thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. That's right. Don't be high-minded because you were able to come in, but you need to fear. And why do you need to fear? Go ahead. Behold, therefore, goodness No, I'm to 21. Oh, for if Elohim spare not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not thee. That's right. Mm. Because if he spread not the natural branches, the natural branches are the one who he said he loved, who he said that they are the apple of his eye. We just read that. He said, you better take heed lest he spread not you either. Verse 22. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of Elohim on them which fail severity, but towards thee goodness, that thou continue in his goodness. Otherwise, thou also shall be cut off. Right. He said, Behold, you got to look at the goodness and the severity of the Most High. On them which fail, severity, and we see that severity going on right now. It said, But towards you, talking about the Gentiles, towards you, goodness. If you continue in his goodness, otherwise thou shall also be cut off. And again, he's talking about the ones that have converted to this truth. He ain't talking about just the Gentiles overall because we keep in mind that we are living in a time of Gentiles. So the Gentiles overall are going to have it good because that's only to provoke us to jealousy. Because all that good that they got blown us. Okay? But our forefathers messed that up for, the, for a time appointed. Okay? Um, go ahead. And they also, if they abide not still in unbelief, shall be grabbed in. Elohim is able able to grab them in again. For if thou were cut off, cut out of the olive tree which is wild by nature, and were grabbed contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these which be natural the natural branches be grabbed into their own olive tree? That's right, their own olive tree. He said the olive tree belongs to Israel right there. And you are grabbing into something that don't even belong to you. By faith. By the grace of the Most High. And see what he's saying here. It's just like the covenants. People don't understand that. When you read about an old covenant in scripture. New covenant in scripture. It was only made through, by one, pe through one people. Israel. Covenants were not made with nobody else. So the covenants represent the tree. You are grafted into the covenant. You are grafted into the olive tree. Both of those belong to Israel. Go ahead. Yeshua was sent to none, save the lost sheep That's of Israel. That's right. Matthew 5th chapter. He didn't come for nobody else. He didn't come for nobody else, but only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. To build Israel back up to be that priest nation. And it was only after he did what he came to do that... The gent that the disciples went and preached as a witness to all nations. And that's why how we got the scripture right here, right now, because of the work that they did. See, you got a lot of Israelites that don't even believe in the New Testament. Well, I got news for you. If it wasn't for the work of these disciples of the New Testament, 
we wouldn't even have none of this right now. Yeah. Huh? What's that that verse Yahshua say about the prophets? Uh, for you see these the prophets desire to see the things which ye see. Uh huh. That's and then, right. Yeah. And have not seen them. And desire to hear right. the things uh -huh. which ye hear and have not That's heard. That's right. Yeah. Absolutely. The, the law is the schoolmaster. Is now called. look, just like right there, what you're saying there. He said that back then, and look at where we at today. <laughs> We see stuff that even they they couldn't even they heard they was mm. prophesied about wow, yeah. you know remind me of Daniel when Daniel in ninth chapter when he was praying to the Most High and was sweating and had on ashes and he said because all of the curses that was spoken of by Moses have come upon us but guess what Daniel all the curses hadn't even come upon him even in his day. Mm -hmm. Daniel caught a little bit of that during that Bab um, King, uh, King Nebuchadnezzar Babylon thing, but he still knew who he was, right? Israel still knew who they was. They were still speaking their own tongue back in that day, even though the Babylonians was changing some of their names and stuff, you know, but they knew who they was. But the whole completion of what Moses prophesied is happening, and that's right. <laughs> It was made manifest in our day. See, we see some things now that probably would have made Daniel fainted. <laughs> That's why when the father was giving Daniel some more prophecies in the last chapter, Daniel, he told Daniel, go stand in your lot to the end of your days because all that I gave you wasn't for your time. It was for the time appointed. Oh. Uh-huh. Just go Man. stand in your lot. You're going to rise up out of your grave at the end of the days. And then maybe some of them brothers that's going to be around, they'll tell you what they happened. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> they'll come back and say, Damn, remember when you said that all these curses spoke now about Moses? <laughs> that one, that's uh, it's, it's not. <laughs> that's right, brother. Walk them that, through the neighborhood. That's right, but hey, hey, hey. Hey, you ever see that? It always you know, Daddy going to be looking it up like, Man, what language is y'all speaking in? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that'll be something to see, though. Either us going there or them coming here. Oh, yeah. One of them will be oh, something yeah. to see. Yeah, oh, that, yeah. That thing, oh. Brother, I can't wait for that. Oh, I yeah. can't wait for that, oh, man. Yeah. I, I, I cannot wait for that. <laughs> it's, it's not often that I'll be thinking about that. Yeah. I don't know what, but I can, right now, just thinking about it, though, because I want to think about this moment right here. Daniel, I'm telling you, bro, I could not wait <laughs> for you. Man, you yeah. know, but that, that's, that's heavy. But, oh, yeah. but definitely, you know, but like, just go, just go back to what you're saying. Hey, what they done saw back then, man, Father done poured upon us a fury without measure mm -hmm. at this time of point. Did we, did we end up where we at here? Uh, um, I think it was, yeah, 24. 24, there it go, 24. If that were cut off. No, oh, 25, I'm sorry. Yeah, Verse 25, go ahead. Why would not, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery? Lest ye be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is having to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. There it is. He said blindness in part is happening to Israel. That's why all Israel have not awakened right now. He said that is going to be how it is until the time of the Gentiles be come in. Okay? So, so again, when you want to identify who Israel is, you got to be with all throughout the scriptures. Genesis to Revelation. That's our lesson, so I hope you all were edified through this word. Hallelujah.